I'm Rob Cotter, founder and CEO of Organic Transit, and this is The Elf. Made in the USA, the ELF is a revolutionary vehicle powered by you and the sun, designed to make your commute more fun, practical, and affordable than ever before. It can legally go anywhere a bike goes, and its three-wheeled stability allows for tight cornering and easy transitions from trail to street. The ELF is slim enough to comfortably share bike trails with other riders, yet spacious and sturdy enough to carry you and up to 350 pounds of cargo. The powerful electric motor and lithium battery pack flattens hills and makes carrying home the groceries a breeze. Our innovative ride height puts you on the same level as car drivers, and the eye-catching design makes sure you are safer and more visible in traffic. Once you reach your destination, just park the Elf in the sun and allow the rooftop solar panel to recharge your battery as you go about your day. The Elf is the perfect zero carbon vehicle for commuting, trips to the store, or getting around urban centers quickly and cleanly. Today, we are designing and building these vehicles right in downtown Durham, North Carolina. Tomorrow, we will be building our vehicles in downtowns across the globe. So that was a lot of fun, but uh, why do we build this? And 40% of US car trips are two miles or less. And so we live in this passive culture, <clears throat> this passive culture. We're passive about our, our physical condition. We're passive about the impact that automobiles have on our community with parking and roads absorbing the majority of the space. And we're passive about where our energy comes from. Thousands of miles away, you really don't have to think about it. But at some point, it all comes back home to roost, essentially. And we're disconnected from the consequences of our action. And we've embraced this culture of passivity, but we really need to move on to a, a culture of uh, an energetic culture, where we're we're energetic about our own personal health, we're engaged in what our community reflects and how it treats all our local citizens, and we're engaged and energetic about how we acquire our energy. And it doesn't have to come from oil wells thousands of miles away with catastrophic results, but it can come from solar. And we use solar and we use calories, the most local abundant resource we have. <laughs> so. So historically, we look back, and the Model T, they were doing 10,000 cars a day. And in 1923, they were at about 15 million cars, more cars produced by the Model T than any other car since um, in that time frame. And Henry Ford said in 1923, we have to be totally vigilant and realize that fossil fuels don't last forever, and we cannot live with the consequences of that pollution from fossil fuels. We have to do something in 1923. And then we move on into the 30s and the Volkswagen Beetle, a very innovative little vehicle for the 30s. Very light, very efficient, air-cooled, rear engine. But that vehicle was considered efficient for another 50 years. Why was that taking so long to make the changes that need to happen? In the 50s, there was a microcar movement after World War II, people needed inexpensive, efficient cars in Europe. And this one is called the Isetta. It was built by BMW and also helped maintain and grow the BMW car company to what it is today. But the question is, why didn't this occur? Why does it keep going so we can have little, tiny, really slick, efficient cars now at the current technology that we have? So organic transit, we lean heavily on bicycle efficiency and elegant design. And we're not the first ones to do it, obviously, but it's a great way to go because they are so, so incredibly efficient. Efficiency 101. This is a bicycle. No hills, no drafting, no motor, just a guy pedaling at 83.3 miles per hour. That comes out to about 7,300 miles per gallon, if you could equate that. So if you're wondering what that's like, I suggest someone else drive, but stick your head out the window at 80 miles an hour and see what it's like on the highway. And that's the wind resistance they're facing. And they're able to do that with one horsepower. One of my colleagues built this. This is an extremely efficient electric vehicle. 
and it runs on two car batteries, the same car batteries you use to power, to ignite your gas burning car to start it off. Two of those make this little vehicle run 60 miles an hour for an hour. And I love this one because most engineers have no clue about this. This is the world record setting for miles per gallon. It's 12,600 miles per gallon. So can we get 1%? Can we do that? So, so we take those influences and how we think and what we do, and we came up with the ELF. And the ELF, is we consider that a smart bike. So it's pedal, it's solar, it's legally a bicycle. And our intent is not just to get a few people healthy by riding bikes, but we want to roll this out to millions of people all over the globe. And in the bicycle industry, there's something called the Great Blue Ocean. And the Great Blue Ocean is the 90% of people that should ride bicycles, and they don't. And the reason they don't is they don't want to fall over, they don't want to be caught in bad weather, they don't want to kill themselves going up a big hill, and they want to carry some cargo. So those are the issues that we addressed in our design process. And part of the design process also is to make it very accessible for many people, make it very light, make it very efficient, very shippable. Recycled materials, upcycled materials, um, a decentralized manufacturing process with a micro supply chain so we diminish our carbon footprint in the process of manufacturing. Um, and also for shipping. So all these things stack. We can send uh, like 100 vehicles in a 40-foot container. So in the coming decades, 80% of the world population is going to be moving to urban centers. Currently in the U.S., about 70% of the population live in cities. And that's what we're focused on, is what's a solution for urban eco-mobility? What helps in cases of like, how do you make them park in smaller places? How do you make them a commercial parcel delivery? A catering vehicle, right, that's solar powered, delivering pizza. How many, how many pizza delivery vehicles are in Atlanta every night, scooting around? Unbelievable. And they don't have to be polluting. It doesn't have to be. Light parcel delivery. And then we have multiple other vehicles that, for recreation, for the disabled, a multi-passenger units that could be used as taxi cabs. So an average sedan produces about one pound of CO2 per mile. It's a billion cars on the road and growing fast. It would take an acre of forest grown every year to negate the negative effects of one vehicle. And um, conversely, an elf is like um, if a hundred elves, excuse me, if a million elves are on the road, that's like a hundred megawatt solar farm on our highways. So the upside effect is usually beneficial to doing a vehicle like this. So we have two scenarios. One's an urban commuter. Again, he wants to get in, this person wants to get into work. They don't want to get there all sweaty. They don't want to take a shower when they get in there. They have stuff to bring with them. They scoot in all on electric power. They let it sit on the sun all day. It charges back up. At the end of the day, they pedal home, get all the exercise they want. So for a $4,000 vehicle, if he's replacing his car, if he's able to do that, according to AAA, he's saving $9,300 a year. That's $9,300 in his pocket. That's wonderful, right? That's great. That's $9,300 that didn't go to some international oil company to affect laws and changes that we have no control of. But it's also $9,300 that they can utilize in their own local community and do wonderful things with. And then on the other scenario is in developing nations. Let's say it takes 10 miles for somebody to hike to go get fresh water. They come back with five or 10 gallons. Now they can take an elf, do that trip in a couple of hours, come back with a 55 gallon drum of water. When they get back to the village, the pedal and the solar is a micro utility station that charges up their flashlights, their radios, their cell phones. So we've come up with, the, like, when you're really efficient, it really is a wonderful solution potentially globally. So we have the decentralized manufacturing scenario. We like to do them in downtown locations so people can walk in, see what's going on. It's like touring a brewery. It's a very clean manufacturing process. We can hire low-skilled inner-city labor, bring them into the green economy. And it's just been a, a phenomenal growth thing that we've seen in a very short amount of time. Uh, we have a non-toxic manufacturing environment. And uh, 
Again, we can do this in multiple places. Wherever they're being sold, that's where they should be manufactured. So we do have a lot of fun with it, but not too much fun. But actually, <laughs> actually, uh, this officer pulled us over because he wanted to know about it like everybody wants to know about it. And he went through the numbers and, oh yeah, it is a bicycle. You can use it anywhere a bicycle goes. So if we review, it's about environmental health. It's about social mobility. It's about economic revitalization, job creation in the green economy, and appropriate innovation like our little dashboard here, which is an iPad, but could be a smartphone. And this is a GPS, tells you how much battery life you have left, tells you how much you gained from the solar, tells you um, how many ca uh, calories you burned, and it acts as a key. So when you get in it, it starts it up. When you leave, it shuts it down. Uh, we're planting the seed for a different future, one in which transportation helps make cities cleaner and healthier. We're reconnecting people to their personal health, their communities, and to the planet, one elf at a time. Thank you very much.